Hello and welcome to another episode of the Electric Norwegian Emmas. And this today we have this, the small beaver, the um, BMW iX50. M50, no less, even. No, not this is iX, I'm sorry, I meant i4. The i4 M50, which is a wonderful place to be. Just picked it up, and I must say, I do. Well, it's a small beaver. We had the big one, the iX. The big, uh, big massive SUV. This is for the saloon car based on the existing 4 series, 3 series platform. And so, you know, this is what you get a relatively fair enough boot, nice space with huge Harman Kardon stuff there, we can put the seats down you have an integrated parcel shelf which is nice it just has a tow hook so you know this is gonna be interesting oh oh yeah well you know once once you're in no, no, I'm sorry, this doesn't really work. <laughs> Interior, though, is very typical BMW. It is. <laughs> We get the thing fires up here. The same as the iX and all new BMWs, probably. Very nice, very good seats. Okay, uh, storage area down here. Here we go, pull this. Oh, there's the charging pad. I've been watch looking around for that one. My phone needs power. There it is, charging. And you have, here you have your uh, standard stuff and your buttons for your sports and everything. Carbon fiber, I don't know if I like that. I prefer my carbon fiber, well, non glossy, but you know, it is there, it, it, it looks good, and it, it, this is better than the piano black plastic and it's kind of fair enough okay this is good material the leather is okay you know not quite as thick in the as in the old jag but still very good it's very comfortable and you have a small little um sunroof that you can open so let's take this around on our trip. As you can see, 97% and 14 kilometers estimated. While we're behind the BMW with some, I don't really know why they designed those red tail lights, but what do I know? Um, that's next three, by the way. The iX3 I drove didn't have those lights. But thank you to Sulan Bill in Fredrikstad, and there's an iX in front, so it's a BMW convoy. That's fitting. For lending me this car, they're really nice guys, and uh, they, have plenty of, they have plenty of BMWs and Fords, if you want that. I must say I like the color combination here. I'm not a man for black interiors, as you know, I think I mentioned this in, Jag in the Jaguar video. I would never have a black car, ever, again, except when you buy old cars in condition, so that's why the Jaguar ended up being black on black. But this, with black interior and these um, 
kind of brown seats. It's and then you have the LED mood lighting popping out now. It's, I must say it looks okay. It looks good. Of course you can get this interior in a trillion different color combinations and if you go to the individual department you can get them, get them in a trillion more. That's the nice thing about the German cars. I can now complain about prices and stuff and I do. Uh, sometimes they deserve to be complained on. But you can get anything in any color you want as long as you can afford it, really. This uh, instrumentation and the... the uh, I drive it the same as in the iX, so it's super smooth and super fast and super wonderful to use, it really is. Uh, there's a few plastic surfaces in here, not many, but a few of them that are a little bit... Yeah, this is a, can be a potentially a very expensive car. It really should do better, but on the whole, like I said, the things you touch, steering wheel and surfaces you mostly interact with, nice, very nice. Uh, sadly, they don't have the heated surfaces of everything that you have in the, can get in the BMW iX, because that was really, really, really nice to have. But it has a heated steering wheel, and the button for the heated steering wheel is on the steering wheel itself, which is nice, so you don't have to look around places. Um, it's quiet. It's in the comfort setting. I don't know if there's active suspension or not. I didn't bother to ask, but regardless, comfort seems to be the nice place to have it because you have plenty of power in this thing, 540, 50 horsepower. I think on the north side of 700 newton meters, so power is not the problem here. Uh, and then this comfort setting, it sort of soaks up bumps and steering is... Oh, this, and the seat, this is really, yeah. I must say this, um, this adaptive cruise and lane holder thingy, I have no idea about what BMW calls it, I don't really care. Their autopilot thingy works very well. It's right up there with the Volvo and the Tesla. And we're on the country road now. Because it's a well, it's a clearly marked road, this, so it, uh, it should work well. And it does. And the electric drivetrain here is just super smooth. Of course, BMW has been making electric drivetrains for, I don't know, forever now in the i3. So. Well, consumption wise, yeah, we're doing 224 at the time being, since we left the dealership, mind you. Uh, we're at 86%, we have 376 kilometers indicated. It's okay, I mean, I'm not worried about the range. This, in, you know, you pass 300 kilometers of range and nothing really matters, you know. Um, this is a superb, powerful, quick comfortable GT car. You just sit so nice in it. The steering is nice. The suspension is wonderfully weighted. It's just it's really, really all the good traits you want from a BMW. And But uh, it should have been a little bit... I mean, if this had been my Model 3, it had been running in the low teens now. You know? Oh my god, this thing is really... Jesus, this is nice. And... Um, oh, yes! This is such a sweet handling, effortless thing. It's really a bit scary, but... I can't test the setup cast like this. Well, well, I guess you can't have everything. But the consumption is sort of the only thing that this does I have to complain on. There's a few details here and there, like the uh, plastic around the drive system and the uh, things like that. The cheap looking air vents. Uh, 
but apart from that, it's all sweet as light. Well, it's not that much light because the 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 uh, glass house is relatively narrow, actually. But it sort of fits the sports pay saloon thingy look of the car, I guess. Now we're on the motorway. And yeah, it's quiet. Not as quite as quiet as the Hongqi and the uh, IX, mind you. There's a little bit of wind noise coming from the frameless windows here, and there's some tire noise, but not very much of it, really. If this is bothering you, then yeah, well, I don't know. Buy a Lexus. We're at 80% now. We've driven almost 70 kilometers and it didn't get 341 left so that gives you 410 or something like that which is plenty and you should have passed the point of caring anymore like I said many times it just doesn't matter once you pass 300 real world kilometers because you don't care you have range to get mostly to where you're going or to the nearest charger. It's really not an issue. Not in this one anyway. Small detail though, the heat pump that's in this car. Uh, it sort of is slightly on and off for the temperature. It goes a little bit cold and then goes back again to hot or whatever it's on. Uh, same thing notice in the Tesla too. It's not a big thing. It's just an observation that this is Maybe just a cheap pump thing. I don't know. I didn't want to like this car I wanted to say it was a car of compromises that it doesn't have a front. It's too thirsty And it turns out there's a few other things as well because both of those, both of those are true You have to use the the the, the gear gears stock here and you have to push a button to pull it backwards like you're in something from 1997 and you have to push the on off button to get this thing off the road and then you come here and you just stretch it a little bit and you turn into a corner and that is just be damned the front and they have the lights there as well, which are fabulous, as you can see. Are they? Are they adaptive? Not adaptive, but active, I mean. They turn. What I actually think they do. Yes, they do. And then they have this steering and the suspension here and the, the, the ridiculous amount of power. I often use the word effortless to, to describe certain cars and this is effortless in the absolute degree of the word. And this is just a two-wheel drive, I also mind you, this is not the four-wheel drive. We've done 177.8 kilometers, we have 52%, it still didn't get 211 kilometers, so that means 400 kilometers easy. Yes, my Model 3 and the new SR Plus can do 400 kilometers as well, but it's a different car. This is BMW, qual not necessarily qualities, but BMW, yes, traditional BMW qualities is it, it, at its absolute best. It's a saloon package. The suspension setup, the steering feel, the... Well, it doesn't necessarily feel, but just the way it turns in and the way the the seats, it's just, and this is in comfort, mind you. You don't really need a sport button in this because that just turns the torque into a monster and it's too much and it, it, it is on slightly wallowy with the tires as well. It's, it's a fantastic piece of car, this. If what you want is a driving experience like this, then all of that goes out the window, and the, the slightly cramped rear seats as well. That's not why you buy this car. Then you go buy something else. You buy a BMW iX, you buy a, 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 a 
P7. The x -Bank P7 in many ways reminds you of this, only cheaper and with not necessarily less range, but with a little bit more space there and there. And it has a frunk and you know all these things. Or you just buy it as the Model 3. You know, so so all this. Uh, I haven't charged charge it because I don't need to charge it. it, it, it it's just irrelevant. The Harman Kardon sound system is very good. It can be a little bit flat maybe sometimes in the in the mid range, but it's not really. It's not bad in any way. Yeah, these are active headlights. They follow the stereo. That's just so nice when you the headlights actually turn into a corner. I love this thing. Uh, it's... And then you have... Bang! That's a ridiculous amount of power on this thing. 540 horses and 750 newton meters of torque. That's absurd. That's AMG territory. That's... Consumption is 200. It's been hovering around 200, really. So if this has been as efficient as a Tesla with this battery pack, then, then this car would have had a range of, I don't know, more range than anything I can care to bother imagine. And it still does. And, and you can just enjoy this thing flowing down the road because the suspension flows with the road. It's not too stiff, it's not harsh, it's very perfectly judged indeed. As only the Germans sort of can do this. Uh, and also x -Bank, but that's because they've hired, hired ex Porsche people to set their cars up. That's why they're so fantastically well set up. So if only Tesla could bother to do things in an un-American way. But you know, it is what it is. This is not a Tesla. And um, they don't necessarily cross cross shop either. Oh well. Thanks again to Sulan Bill and Fredrik Star for lending me the car. I uh, yeah, I don't really have anything to add to that. So yeah, thanks for watching and um, like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.